is a holy day for some of our guests. I think semantically we should say it's an unholy day for some of your guests. <laughs> an well, unholy day. Nicholas, uh, what is the werewolf order? You represent the werewolf order. Yes, what is I it? I founded the werewolf order in 1984 as a vanguard for the coming satanic century because we have been defined by Christians and our enemies for too long. Now Satanists are coming out of the underground to reveal what Satanism is in the mm -hmm. media. We're putting out our own music, satanic music, truly satanic music, not this heavy metal crap that we've had saddled onto us. We don't like that sort of music at all. Satanic music would be in the tradition of composers like Richard Wagner, Rachmaninoff, the great classical composers. <laughs> you on to a bunch of footage from all across the country with interviews with the guys and everything. I'm talking to you today from the hills of Hollywood, California, where I learned to skate. And I'll tell you what, over to my left is the emergency broadcast system. What are they going to be warning people here in the event of a nuclear attack on our country where people are going to start thinking about the message we've been telling them for a long time? Because instead of walking down the street with this nice, happy smile on their face and everything's going fine, they're going to start looking something like this. Keep in mind, boys and girls, this is the real world. 50,000 nuclear weapons. Some two and a half tons of TNT for every man, woman, and child on the planet. megaton hydrogen bomb exploding in the air above a single city would be an unimaginable catastrophe. The intense thermonuclear flash would ignite everything it touched over a distance of eight miles. The shock wave would explode most buildings. Raging superheated winds of hurricane force would whip fire and debris through the air. knows how many such bombs would be detonated in a nuclear war, or if a war could be kept limited once it began. Our two countries rely on the terror of nuclear war to help us keep the peace. We've come to this precarious condition over the last 50 years of the nuclear age. This was the beginning. This is a holy day for some of our guests. I think semantically we should say it's an unholy day for some of your guests. <laughs> an well, unholy day. Nicholas, uh, what is the werewolf order? You represent the werewolf order. Yes, what is I founded it? the werewolf order in 1984 as a vanguard for the coming satanic century because we have been defined by Christians and our enemies for too long. Now Satanists are coming out of the underground to reveal what Satanism is in the mm -hmm. media, we're putting out our own music, satanic music, truly satanic music, not this heavy metal crap that we've had saddled onto us. We don't like that sort of music at all. Satanic music would be in the tradition of composers like Richard Wagner, Rachmaninoff, the great classical composers. <laughs>
turning you on to a bunch of footage from all across the country with interviews with the guys and everything. I'm talking to you today from the hills of Hollywood, California, where I learned to skate. And I'll tell you what, over to my left is the emergency broadcast system. What are they going to be warning people here in the event of a nuclear attack on our country where people are going to start thinking about the message we've been telling them for a long time? Because instead of walking down the street with this nice, happy smile on their face and everything's going fine, they're going to start looking something like this. Keep in mind, boys and girls, this is the real world. 50,000 nuclear weapons. Some two and a half tons of TNT for every man, woman, and child on the planet. megaton hydrogen bomb exploding in the air above a single city would be an unimaginable catastrophe. The intense thermonuclear flash would ignite everything it touched over a distance of eight miles. The shock wave would explode most buildings. Raging superheated winds of hurricane force would whip fire and debris through the air. knows how many such bombs would be detonated in a nuclear war, or if a war could be kept limited once it began. Our two countries rely on the terror of nuclear war to help us keep the peace. We've come to this precarious condition over the last 50 years of the nuclear age. This was the beginning. for some
guys, don't forget the pit. Get it back about 15 feet away. Get a small pit. Go in, get out, keep it small, okay?
Why is it that millions of Americans have that irresistible urge to use illegal drugs? Why do these drugs make so many people turn on to them? To understand that, we must first understand what drugs do physically to our minds and our bodies. Brain creates these good feelings for you, especially in the primitive midbrain. The midbrain has many reward centers where rewarding feelings like pleasure, power, contentment, or excitement are created for you by natural brain chemicals bridging the gaps where brain cells meet. Chemicals like dopamine and endorphins. These natural chemical contacts between brain cells give you your normal good feeling. Drugs trick the brain into producing these good feelings. Cocaine, for example, stops dopamine from being reabsorbed, so the reward signal stays and intensifies, producing an intense high. Heroin fakes the endorphin reward signal by imitating the endorphin molecule. All these drugs create false sensations of reward. They can feel something like the exhilaration of winning a race, only you haven't done any running. And scientists have just discovered these drugs also shut off parts of your advanced outer brain, with which you reason and worry, make judgments about your feelings and actions. And this drug has heavy prices for its chemical trickery. Marijuana damages memory power. It shortens your attention span. Heroin, which at first kills anxiety, then leaves you with a rebound of massive anxiety and pain. And cocaine can damage the heart's rhythm and muscle, sometimes making it suddenly stop for good. But none of these dangers stop the person who's addicted to one or more of these drugs. Your brain's natural appetites for food, sex, approval, success, are all changed by the drug's chemical into one big appetite for the drug itself. Tests have been made in a San Gabriel drug bust involving 77 pounds of high-grade China White heroin. The arrests culminate a month and a half of surveillance and stakeouts utilizing local and federal law enforcement personnel. What came in in containers that were filled with uh, can openers, of all things, and uh, in those containers, uh, in addition to the can openers was the 77 pounds of, of white heroin, which mm -hmm. is actually the largest seizure, to my knowledge, of white heroin in the Southland uh, ever. Agents watched as the heroin was brought from LAX to this storage yard in San Gabriel. They watched again as it was taken to a condo on Ramona Boulevard, also in San Gabriel. And that's when they made their move and arrested the suspects and confiscated $50 million worth of China White. Routine, a circus-like atmosphere in which authorities trot out the drugs and money and talk about seizures and arrests and about their ability to stop only one-tenth of the drugs headed for our streets. From January through September of this year, law enforcement in L.A. County has seized more than 12 and a half tons of cocaine, 150 pounds of heroin, dozens of gallons of PCP, and almost $30 million in cash. That's just the first nine months of this year. Much of it was discovered in areas once thought immune from the problem, as Southern California has emerged as second only to Miami in the drug trade. A lot of you, you may be involved in a lot of heavy things, man. You may be addicted to drugs. You may be a full-on alcoholic. You may have many bondages in your life. You may be involved in a satanic cult, but I'll tell you what, and you think, well, dude, I can't get out. You say, Roger, I'm too far into it. God won't forgive my sin. You know what? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. That's what First John 1, 9 is all about, man. You confess your sins, God will forgive you. You know what? There is power. Jeff Johnson said, Satan may be mighty, but Jesus Christ is almighty. And that's happening, man. This next tune is for you. If you think you can't get out of it, and if you think God won't forgive you, Satan's lying to you. 
You can get out of it. Come in salvation. I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once and for all delivered to the saints. Yeah. And you know what? That's what vengeance is calling you guys to. You know what? What I'm looking at here out before me is a new generation of leaders within the Christian body. And I want you guys to get hardcore into it. You know, it is so important, man. It is so important that since we are here, man, and God has allowed us to live this long, the fact that California hasn't had a quake and I'm still alive today, man, to me is a miracle that God allows me and you to live for the purpose of glorifying Him, man. And I'm calling you guys, man. I'm calling you guys to recognize who you are. You are priests of the Most High God. And to recognize that fact, man, and to me to be going forth in mighty power, man, to make a difference in Austin while you are alive, while you are here, man, because we don't know what tomorrow may bring. And we want to hear the Lord look at us and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And that's what we need to know. You know what? We are called to be holy, man. We are called to be full on holy. And you know what? For those of you who aren't Christians here, let me explain to you the, what holiness is because you don't know what holiness is. You do not know it. Let me explain it to you because what you think holiness is is that we're claiming that we're some holier than thou, that we're some perfect people who never make mistakes, who never blow it. You're wrong. Holiness in the Bible is not the eradication of evil within the nature of man because the Bible says when you were born again, the, God, the seed of God is planted within you. You have two natures. You have the nature of God within you that strives to be standing in righteousness and you have the old man that can't hypocrite. No, he's not a hypocrite. You're the hypocrite because you think that you're going to stand before God and get into heaven because you are a good dude. You know what? If I ask you right now, why are you going to heaven? Do you think you're going to heaven? If you if you say, well, because I've been a pretty good person, or if you say, well, because I haven't been that bad, you ain't going. Yeah. The only reason that we're going to heaven is because Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for our sins. And holiness, and holiness is consecration unto the work of God, unto the ministry, man, to be involved in our local churches, man, to be calling others into the priesthood, man. That's what this whole next album, the direction of it is, because you know what? We are called to be holy, but we see from the, from the Levitical priesthood in the book of Leviticus, the priests were holy, but they were not perfect. We are holy, but we are not perfect. We make mistakes, and so you can't judge someone's Christianity based upon their level of sanctification, but we're calling us to be holy, consecrated unto the work of God, because I'll tell you what, over and over and over I have people come up to me and say, well, Roger, should I or shouldn't I listen to Slayer? Well, Roger, should I or shouldn't I listen to Metallica? Let me tell you something. I don't want to deal with the don'ts. You can quit smoking, you can quit drinking, you can quit listening to Slayer. That's not going to save you. Yeah. But giving your life to Jesus Christ will. And here's what I encourage you. Yeah. If you want to be a priest before God, don't ask yourself the don'ts. What you need to ask yourself is, are the do's? Yeah. Are you doing what the Bible commands? Are you leading others to Jesus Christ? Are you regularly attending church? Are you full on discipling other people? Because if you're not, why bother with the don'ts? Because that's not going to, it's the do's that are the issue. And I'll tell you what, you start doing the do's, you won't come up to me with questions like that. Yeah. It's the do's that I want to encourage, man. And again, man, let's not, and let's be beware, man, because the Bible says that it's so heavy, Matthew 7, 21. Many are going to stand before God and say, Lord, didn't I go to a vengeance concert in your name? Yeah. He'll say, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. I never knew you. The Bible says what it is to know God is to obey his commandments, man. And you can only do that truly with the Holy Spirit, man. I call you, man. Like I say, I look before me at the next generation of Christian leaders, man. But you guys need to be full on hardcore. Are you going to do it? Yeah! All right, man. We want to get out here and jam a bunch more tunes. You know what? One last thought before we get into this tune. You know what? A lot of you, you may be involved in a lot of heavy things, man. You may be addicted to drugs. You may be a full-on alcoholic. You may have many bondages in your life. You may be involved in a satanic cult, but I'll tell you what. And you think, well, dude, I can't get out. You say, Roger, I'm too far into it. God won't forgive my sin. You know what? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. That's what 1 John 1, 9 is all about, man. You confess your sins, God will forgive you. You know what? There is power. Jeff Johnson said, Satan may be mighty, but Jesus Christ is almighty. And that's happening now. This next tune for you. If you think you can't get out of it, and if you think God won't forgive you, Satan's lying to you. You can get out of it. This tune. Next tune. Very special. 
special to us. It invites Larry Farkas here to do a little bit of lead vocaling. Some people say it's one of our lengthy numbers. I question their reasoning on that, but this song is called Receive Him. Uh, this is dedicated to my good friend, Dwayne. Mr. Larry Farkas' house, and uh, we're going to catch him as he's coming outside of his house here in a second here. I know I saw him. There he is. Hey, Larry, dude, what's up? What are you doing? Can I go to the beach? It's a nice outfit. Yeah. Well, where are you going? Shoes, my fence. Oh, we're going to the beach. Yeah, we're going to the real beach. We're going to a beach where they have waves, not a pond like they have at Bruce and Cheryl's house. See, Bruce and Cheryl took us to a pond out in Chicago. You know what I mean? Uh, no, we're going to go to a real beach, man. Come on, let's go. All right. Here he goes. Here we go. <laughs> there they go. See you guys later. Oh, man, they left me here. That's the little booty that he sleeps with at night. infamous Glenn Man Caruso hanging out at the ocean. What beach are we at? We're at uh, this is Manhattan, 42nd Street, like I said before. This is cool. Check out the water. Check out, you can see for miles and miles and miles. You know? Down there, if you can see right over here, lad. Traveling into Los Angeles, traveling all into where everyone breathes, and there's a whole sky. <laughs> but, you know, you're pointing out the pier. Yeah, there's a pier down there. See it? You see it? That's Manhattan Beach Pier. We got, there's three other piers, too. So, there's a Hermosa after this one, and then we're down the beach pier. Yeah. So you got to have some of these here, too. You know what I mean? Mr. Rip Curl. That's his yeah. nickname, Rip Curl. No, it ain't. Mad dog. Anyway, you gotta have some of these eight gloves too. They're great. I ain't gonna use them right now because I don't need them. Counting, sir. What are those? Uh, trusted bag. I've never seen those.
Everybody doesn't know it, but this beach, there was 10,000 gallons of pollution dumped here this morning. They'll come out quite violently ill, but... This is where we capture most of our great whites down here. Where Larry's at right now. Uh, they usually get about 500 feet long and uh, could probably swallow uh, oh, 10 or 20 men at the same time without chewing. But if the smaller ones, like 25 foot sharks, they could just take a bite and cut Larry right in half. But uh, we won't tell them about the one we just spotted out there. This is why Larry's in the water <laughs> alone. Larry's in the water alone and no one else will go in with him. people. You know, Roger's out there riding his bike, doing his thing, you know, getting physical, what he likes to do. That's pretty much what I like to love the beach. I doubt I'd ever move away from it. Doug, he's supposed to be in here. Can't seem to find Doug nowhere. But, uh, like Rod said earlier in the video, we got some live clips for you. A little bit about each one of us, kind of. So, uh, we hope you enjoy the video and that, uh, we love you.
<laughs> when you're playing bass guitar, you know, playing in a speed metal band, you got to develop some speed and keep it. Same with getting in shape for the road, for stage. You got to get in shape, you got to keep in shape. So that's what I like to do, you know, ride the bike a little bit. Stop the car so we can watch the bicycle race. Oh, oh, this is a good spot, Harry. Stop here.
you become a Christian, you become a hardcore man, the ultimate hardcore is right. You can hear it from the family, man. We invite you to become one of us tonight. For many shall come. In my name. Say it, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. Clark that their sons were brainwashed and abused by members of a Saugus religious cult took their case to Santa Ana Court today. As Barney Morris reports, they won their custody battle, but the brothers are still pursuing criminal charges against the cult. Two brothers, Robert and Carrie Miller, joined a religious cult as teenagers 17 years ago. They met and married their wives, also members of the Tony and Susan Alamo Foundation. But today, they were in court finalizing divorces from those wives and asking sole custody of their three sons. The Millers say their wives were brainwashed, and that the boys were being mentally and physically abused on orders of cult leader Tony Alamo. Judge Richard Frazee did grant them sole custody and ordered that the wives and other cult members remain at least 200 yards away from the Millers and their sons. Attorney Sidney Raddus told reporters that 11-year-old Justin Miller was beaten so badly he was bleeding for a week. The abuse consisted of Justin being held down by four adults while a fifth adult using a two-handed paddle three feet long beat him 140 times. Radis says he wants the California Attorney General to consider criminal charges against Tony Alamo and members of his religious cult which operates several communes including one in Saugus. The boys and the fathers both told stories of physical and psychological abuse while they were members of the cult. We are living our lives to the best of our ability. We do try to live as normal as a life as we can, and the boys have adjusted really great. You know, they've got Little League trophies now from this year, and they got awards in school. Justin was the top student in his class, and, uh, you know, they're getting along. He came to power in post-World War I Germany, a nation plagued by chaos and despair. Adolf Hitler offered a vision of a German master race, a thousand-year empire to rule the world. He left behind a legacy of death. pay for this again and again and again I've got to pay for your sins how many times have I got to pay for your sins I'm getting tired I'm getting tired For a minute. We're gonna get a little stuff for you. Well, that's okay, Joe. I don't think we'll be seeing each other again. I don't have no hard feelings. Thank you, Charlie. You've done a remarkable job. You gave me a fair trial, just like you promised. And I ain't bitter about having to go back in. It's always been my home, anyhow. What about death, Charlie? What about it? I told you I'm already dead. And while I'm waiting around to take the other form, I got steady chow. It ain't great, but it's better than garbage. And I don't go think the black man's gonna take over. 
I'll make you put a clog in that one. In other words, the trial alerted Whitey. Yeah. But I almost did it, didn't I? I almost pulled it off, almost made it, huh? No, Charlie, you weren't even close. You killed some people, that's what you did. You accomplished murder. You took a bunch of sad kids, human flops, and you played jailhouse games on them. That's it, Charlie. You're not even important anymore. You guys are, are it, it really isn't a joke because you guys are into some really sickening stuff. First of all, I understand that, that you wanted to hold a rally for Charles Manson. What do you think about that? Charles, Charles Manson is one of the greatest philosophers of our age. Oh. <laughs> I hope not. Beginning. That is only the beginning of the crusade that we are bringing no, to no, this let, world. No, let me, let me talk. Before Sally went in an interview, Mr. Shrek said to the interviewer, and it's on videotape, words to the effect that their goal, his goal, is the annihilation of the total Judeo-Christian population Absolutely. of the world. Well, that's of happening. Uh, and and that's going to bring... That the human race has overpopulated the world, and the Judeo-Christian tradition has succored weakness. It has succored people who should not be helped. And what we believe is that we should like let the, the natural, affirm, like the children, what we who should let and, the natural, what we should let happen is that the natural processes of nature should take care of these things. Okay, saying better breeding, weakness or illness or people like that should not be saved. I'm returning. Be very specific with yes, this. Yes, I'm returning to the ancient tradition of eugenics, mm. which means that. We should have a stronger humanity. We should what Judeo Christianity. But how do you ex expect to we do let it? Nature, we do not have welfare. No welfare. We, we eliminate now we're getting government all aid. the poor get to die off. Yes, we exactly. We tax the churches mm -hmm. as well. We yes, this is another thing that the, the poor die off. Mm -hmm. No welfare. Those, it's sink or swim. No, we, if someone is ill. If someone is ill, they get the proper medical care. However, if someone is... If they can contribute to their society, otherwise you let them die because they're sending them away. Are, if they are, no, if they book. are valuable members of society, ah, as in, now, let's just return to the But who decides the who is a valuable member of society? We, we allow nature to decide. Hey, I have something to tell you, Nicholas. I have a son that's handicapped, and he's nine years old, and he's the best thing that ever happened to me and happened to a lot of people. And there's a lot of handicapped people out here that give so much more to this world than you can ever give. They know well, so much more about life and so much more about love than you will ever know. What do you... If we're making a better breed of man, let what me, happens to the handicap? Let me explain this. Very she, quickly. She's speaking emotionally after hearing this Christian hysteria. We have nothing against... You were the one who said... We have nothing... You were the one who said that the weak among us should not thrive. We have nothing against the handicapped. We're talking That's about people who sponge off of the government, who use other people to support themselves. Okay. He, Hitler was not wrong in what he did. Yes or no? No, he represented the natural order. Okay, and number two. There's number going to be, there are going to be many more manifestations. Like
How's it going? This is Roger Martinez, and I'm speaking to you from Palos Verdes, California. Behind me, you see the ocean, and you've seen a lot of really cool places out here today. There's many things that we're into, you know, this is the type of areas that we like hanging out at. You know, it's really heavy because here in California, especially, as well as, you know, around our country, we have a lot of freedoms. But you know, it's not that way around the world. Here we have the ocean, we can see the expanse, we can see the works of God, you know, and it's happening. And it's like, around the world, it's not that way. In Albania right now, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, hey, they'll throw you in prison, man. In Nepal, for many, many years, Christians were being thrown in prison. And you know, I enjoy coming out here to places like this and being hanging out on the ocean and, you know, getting some surfing in and what have you. But I'm going to tell you something, man. Those freedoms are very precious. And well, as we as believers have this type of freedom that God has given us, man, we also have a responsibility to use our time and our lives wisely. I would really encourage you guys to understand the good things that God gives us and the blessings we have in this country, to really use them to His glory. In times like this, hey, I told a dish with you right here. Here we have a full-on ocean. This is where I like to hang out. And I'll tell you what, it gives me one sense of something in my life, which is God's work in my life and the freedom that He's given me from the penalty of sin. I hope you can see that same perspective, and no matter where God has you in the country, if perhaps someday you get to hang out in Southern California with us, or one day, whatever you're doing, that you'll just see the work of God in your life, and that you'll understand that He loves you. You know, it was a place similar to this on the ocean. The Bible says that Jonah was in a, a ship at the ocean. He was on an ocean just like this, and the Bible says a huge storm came, and he was thrown into the belly of a whale. But you know what? God gave him a second chance. You know, that's what one of the tunes on the second album, Once Dead, is all about. It's about the story of Jonah. And the thing is, that whereas God gives us second chances, that we should also be concerned and loving about the people around us, about the people who we might see in life, who we maybe perceive are rebelling against God the way Jonah did. But you know what? For us, we're not to be condemning or condescending of them, but we're being to be able to do what we can to help them out. It's things like this that bring that to my mind, and I hope for you too that you'll keep that compassion. One of the main characteristics that our Lord Jesus Christ had was compassion, that He simply didn't speak knowledge, but that He truly cared about the people to whom He was speaking to. We hope you gain this perspective, and we hope you're enjoying this video as we get to wrap with you a little bit and show you a little bit of Southern California, where we live and what our lives are like. Savin' and Thrashers, this is Roger Martinez, the vocalist of Vengeance Rising, and you're checking out the new video that we just put <laughs> Let me do it again. <laughs> Sometime, huh, bro? Hey, what do you think? Nope. Yeah, hey, this is Larry. Yeah, hi. And Glenn... Look at he's playing... Hey, there's Roger. Hey, Roger, you own this, Chevelle? Is it? Yeah, I didn't know you owned this. on this killer engine. Oh, come on, Glenn. You can't work on a car. California yeah. streets. Are you serious, Glenn? Uh, this is your car? No, it's not my car. Oh, you're I, just I, looking like you're working I on it. I enjoy doing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is a bad motor, though, man. This, is a, this right here is a 1970 350 LT1 Corvette motor. But it can't okay. it beat my... Uh, yeah, I'm holding up the card so Glenn knows what to say, everybody, because he doesn't really know what this is. I, I really... I got a Super Sport. I don't care what you have. <laughs> hey, this has got a new battery in it, Doug. Yeah, that's right. I got more <laughs> air in my car. Oh, no. There's more air in the tires. There's more chrome, okay? Oh, oh. There is. A, the chrome makes it go a lot it'll, faster. It'll, yeah. Too bad it doesn't have an air cleaner. It doesn't need one. Oh, you just like sucking down them bugs, huh? Right. Right? All right, yeah. great. Yeah. Too bad Actually, it looks like garbage, though, huh? Protein this has got 300, it's pushing stock, 375 horse. That's yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. We hooked the horses on the back. But I enjoy, I, I enjoy helping my friends, like... What do you, what do you think about this? Allison over here. This now, is Keith, Keith again, I bet you own this thing, thing, huh? He was it's already on this video lab. once before, wasn't he? Keith, Keith are you happy with his motor? His Tell us. We helped him put the His tool. Me and Keith his ramp. His band. His music. His instrument. Actually, Keith, you know what? You don't have a, uh, a point. Uh, Who is track. Keith? Thing. That's his what I want to know. His clothes. <laughs> These are Keith's oh. clothes. Glenn, can I ask you a personal question? We use Keith's toothbrush. Did you adjust Keith's valve? There are nothing wrong with Keith's valve. Why doesn't it run? Because he's... Come on, Keith, but can you fire this up for us? I can fire it up. Fire it up. Let's see if it right, sounds better than my Camino. Camino. I get the distributor cap on. Put the distributor cap on. Okay. Because, look, that's all he does. He knows how to take it on and off. That's anyway, it. hold on a second, Keith. I'm going to fire this baby up here. Uh-oh, i, I got to get a view well, of the exhaust here. I'll tell you when you're ready to go. I'm not even in the car yet. Oh. This is an incredible day. 
It is beautiful. Bill Rogers, what do you think of Mayan? Oh, I really like it out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I found the key. Man, how are your legs, man? They like rubber by now. Oh, yeah. I enjoy doing this. This is what he enjoys doing, but he never does it. He doesn't do it, You know does Glenn. He? Yeah, Glenn's such a you know he never does nothing. Is he so tell us about Glenn, man. That's why, I'm going to tell you about Glenn. See that car right there? That's actually Glenn's truck. And the reason why he has that is because it's import, because imports don't break down. Glenn, is this true? You own an import, Glenn? I own an import. Oh, my gosh. Earlier in the video, oh, he's but talking I about a... an American car, too. Yeah. A VW? We are, <laughs> we are Vengeance Rising is pro-America. Okay. Is that why you own a Japanese what? car, Glenn? So do I. I own a Japanese yeah, car. Yeah, but we're still pro. Let's see if this thing even gets started here. Oh, I'm getting back. <laughs> well, let's look at the oh, exhaust here. Okay, watch the blue. Like a fine precision tool. Glenn, you know, can you answer a question? So mechanics, yes. That, what is that in your hand? This is a ratchet, a Craftsman ratchet. It's actually a copy of a snap-on, okay? If you'll notice... Okay, thank you, Glenn. So, <laughs> if you'll notice, the, the ratchet... Do you know how to work right, it? See how smooth it is? See, this tool right here to a mechanic... People don't is care no, about It would be no good to me if, I, if, if it didn't work right. You know, if it wasn't smooth. Hey, all right. Right. <laughs> Just like God wouldn't be able to use... Roger, us. what do you think about God? Oh, I'm sorry. Just like God wouldn't be able to use us if we were... If we weren't fine... Not fine-tuned, but prepared and, and, and studied up and, and in the Word and in prayer... You know, and just stagnant. You know, what, what can God do with us? You know what I'm saying? It's the same way with 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 the mechanics tool. We are tools. We are God's tools, and He uses us. And and that's why I enjoy working on cars. I teeth for you. I want to thank you guys for coming out, and again to let you know that vengeance, man. Everything you're gonna read in our albums, we totally back it up. You know what? And we put our actions behind our words. We have an 800 line. If you ever want to rap or you want something down, it won't even cost you a dime. Give us a call. We're also gonna be around tonight, man. We want you guys to be our friends, man. But that's gonna be up to you. We're here to be your friends. These are three more tunes we're gonna be doing tonight. Boy, and I think many of you are familiar with. It's a tune called. Mulligan, do.
tonight. Again, we want to tell you, man, Vengeance, we've talked to all the band tonight the same way we'll talk to you, man. We're ready to approve ourselves unto God. Workmen that need not be just ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And for those of you who aren't aware, the Bible says if you hear that word today, this is the day of salvation, and that's the name of this next song. <laughs> That is not Doug's car. Where that music is coming from. That godless reprobate vehicle is. Doug is a man of God. He joins us from sunny Southern California with his beautiful fiance Gina. We will see donning the ictus on the window vehicle. And again, this music is not coming from this man's vehicle but the reprobates behind him. Seems a little music. Uh, 1972 SS music. El Camino. A little music. <laughs> yeah, a music. it's uh, a beautiful uh, electric blue with his uh, inky rims and uh, TA radials, if you notice. If we look in the inside here, Go well, check it out. He's got a nice uh, B&M quick shift, uh, and underneath that he's got, I think, I believe it's a Turbo 400 tranny, and uh, he is sporting. Hey, Doug, what kind of engine are you sporting in this thing? A 350? Uh, it's an extra heavy duty rubber band. Oh, well, let's, let's look at the engine in this thing. So much. Okay. Doug says I can pull the engine open. We look in the car here, and we'll see that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a brake release. Hey, this is not one of those cheap Japanese cars. I guess he does have an actual hood release down here. The whole look. That's my hand. Excuse me. And uh, Mr. Doug Thiem is going to open his hood in. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, not much to look at, is it? Oh, well. Hey, Doug, where'd you go? Doug. Oh, there he is. <laughs> That's uh, Doug's theme. And his uh, fiance, Gina. And Larry. Say hi, Gina. Hi. And Larry. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yes. Oh, by the way, when are you getting married? What is the date now? July 6th. July 6th. And, uh, you know, you guys uh, will miss it. So uh, we'll see you later now. We're going to fade out now. Fade out. Bye. We've uh, kind of not been running because Glenn, our faithful or, uh, mechanic has no, been on Glenn, tour. But but, you know, I tell you, it's like, you know, these guys are into, you know, Something. working out and like, like Roger on his bicycle. Or he has a bike. Roger, Roger, uh, Roger, the other Roger on the skateboard and... You know what I'm into? Doug. Where, well, where's what Larry, I'm into? Larry. I mean, See, Larry. This, this is what I'm into. This is my fiance. <laughs> no. Larry's not my fiance yet. This is, this, no, this is Gina. Like She's a beloved woman of God. I love her very much. Thank you. Hi, Gina. Everybody. Thank you, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, show the ring. The ring, the ring. Come on, bust out the ring. Oh, it's too big to get in the camera. We can't see it. But, but don't worry about it, Bob. I, I mean, we got to get flying off. It don't start. There we go. And this is what Doug does. towards the 91 freeway and there's my shadow see that's I want to thank you guys for coming out and again to let you know that vengeance man everything you're gonna read in our albums we totally back it up Metal 
old maniacs of thrash, Vengeance Rising, coming to Thrash Bash 90 at Janice Landing, October 30th at 7.30 p.m. A metal mania so intense, so fast, so outrageous. Vengeance Rising at Janice Landing, October 30th. Tickets are $5 with special appearance of Sonic Angel. Thrash Bash 90, listen to the steel scream. <laughs>自分になるためには自分を磨くことしかないということでえ努力しているそうですそれでもう一つハリウッドの話題ですヘビーメタルロックを通して若者たちにキリスト教を教えようというえクリスチャンダントの話題ミュージックボックスのキャスター西森マリ
この方がロジャー・マルチネス牧師まだ24歳で牧師を務める傍らベンジェンスというヘビーメタルバンドのリードシンガーとしても活躍していますマルチネス牧師のモットーはあまり難しい言葉を使わずに聖書を分かりやすく解説するということお説教の内容はこれといって目新しいことはないのですがなんといっても牧師さん自身がロックミュージシャンなのでロックキッズたちが親近感を抱くことができるというのがサンクチュアリーの最大の長所です I walked into the doors and my, my pastor welcomed me. He, and he's got long hair, he's got long hair about there. And, um, and when, I, when they told me that he was the pastor, you know, I was just like, I was flipping. Were people in other churches actually turn you down? Well, I was never kicked out, but it was the kind of thing where if I were to go, I would have to make sure I had the best clothes and whatever. And sometimes I actually didn't go just because I didn't have anything to wear. I didn't think that was right, you know. I thought the Lord accepted us for what we were, not what the church people said. He made us to be who we are, so why try to be something else? I have been told not to come back. <laughs> yeah, because they just, you know, long hair is not right to them. You know, I just don't have a boldness, but God is going to lead you into that. He's 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 going to lead you into that. This place is not actually a church. Okay, the, yeah, the facilities that we rent on Sunday afternoons is called Haunted Studios. It's a、uh, costume shop and a studio where they allow plays to happen too. And it's interesting because in, in the Bible it points out that the church is actually the people contained within the building and that it's not actually the building and that any building that the body of Christ, it's called the, the members, the people who gather together, they are the church. マルチネス牧師は夜になるとロックシンガーとして布教活動を行っています若者の教会離れに防ぎ麻薬や飛行に走るのを食い止めるには若者に最も人気のあるヘビーメタルを通じて神の教えを解くのが一番だからです It's extremely、uh, heavy. It's in the area of what is known as thrash. At first, people might say, wow, I can't understand that. But those who, are really, who, who like that style will seek to understand what it's about. And then we tell them in between songs, too, what they're about. When they hear it, they're very shocked because it, the last place they expected to hear it was in a club down on the strip, you know, here in Los Angeles in Hollywood. ヘビーメタルは社会に幻滅した若者たちのフラストレーションのはけ口だと分析していますがそのはけ口を逆に入り口として神の教えを聞くもうというのがクリスチャン・バルなんです。説教をしていた穏やかな姿からはとても想像できないような激しさですけどもこのオーディエンスとの熱狂的な一体感があるからこそ若者の心を本当に掴むことができるのでしょう。なんとなく最後は<笑>本当にアメリカらしい話題ですけれども、えー、さて、あのー、今度はですね、えー、またニューヨークの方から本当の情報を皆さんにお願いします。
Thank you guys. Yo, we got a chance to do one more tune. So uh, we're gonna do Harold's Violent Death for you. Hey Glenn Sellers, we're glad you guys are behind this time because we are behind you.
By 1953, when the war ended, the U.S. nuclear stockpile had tripled thanks to massive spending under NSC-68. The U.S. now had about 1,350 atomic bombs, at least 10 times more than the Soviet Union. And U.S. scientists were pressing ahead with the hydrogen bomb, a weapon that would add a totally new dimension to the nuclear age. In November 1952, on Anahuitac Atoll, the U.S. tested the world's first thermonuclear device. The explosion was 600 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The atoll disappeared completely. For the moment, at least, the nuclear balance had shifted in America's favor. It would take only 40 or 50 such bombs to destroy the Soviet Union. In 1953, within a year of the American explosion, the Soviets were ready to test. were now armed with weapons that could destroy the human race. A series of seemingly logical decisions had brought us to a chilling paradox. From this time forward, to protect ourselves, we would risk annihilation. There were people who just sort of wrung their hands at this. Uh, man's stupidity, or he's man to man, or whatever it was. Uh, won't these people ever stop? And the answer is, well, not now. <laughs> here with Roger Martinez from Vengeance Rights, man. We're going to end this video with this. We're here in Irvine, California at the Suicidal Exodus show. Now, tell you what, we have one thing, you know, a lot of people have a lot of thoughts about it, so what's going on and what's happening with the band and the ministry, but I'll tell you what, we're out here telling people about Jesus Christ and all that we're doing. And as you watch these people leave the show, we have one question to ask you. What are you doing about it?
This is where I'm at, uh, my office here, and I'm going to be showing you a number of things. Uh, in reference to my study time, I get a lot of questions from you guys as to how I go about it. Primarily, there's a couple of main tools that I use. These are things that I didn't have uh, the first several years as I was studying the Word, uh, but in due time, I was able to obtain them, um, and I'll tell you, there are things that actually will be quite beneficial to you if you'll choose to invest in them. Uh, the first is an Apple Macintosh Plus computer. And this thing right here allows me, through the word processing uh, system, to be able to put together studies and save them uh, to be able to take from several different sources. As you can see over here uh, is one of the shelves in this room of the books that I use. Uh, there are several of them that I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to basically take the camera and pan back and forth on these. So you can see the types of books that I use, and as you choose to go and begin purchasing them yourself, you can begin to build your own library. It's important that you do this, and I'll tell you why. Because you're going to be coming up under a number of different situations in which you'll need specific information that perhaps you might have written to me about. Maybe you've written me a letter, maybe you've called me on the phone. Uh, I can do my best to research them for you, but it's for every believer to maintain their own personal library, and that way we can all be people to whom others can come to. We can all be the salt, the salt and the light, as we're called to be. And so I'd really encourage you to do that. Uh, it's important because one of the things you're going to find scripturally, obviously, is that your spirituality is shown very much on how you spend your money. How you spend your money will show where you're at spiritually. Now, as you can see here, there's several thousands of dollars worth of books. It's taken me several years to compile this amount. I mean, I had to start with one. As a matter of fact, one of the first ones outside of my Bible was the Strong's Concordance right here. And it allowed me to do just basic word studies, basic topical studies, things of that nature. Uh, from there, my library grew. Uh, back when I was about so 16 years old, I got this Webster's Dictionary, uh, which has been an invaluable tool as well, because there's a number of times, and in your study, one of the perspectives you want to keep is that you always want to understand the words that you're taking a look at. Uh, if you don't understand something, don't simply bypass it, but check it out in the dictionary, check it out with a couple of other different books. For instance, the Moody Handbook of Theology that I have here. Uh, this is one excellent tool. Uh, there's a number of them, actually, that are here. Lewis Burkhoff's Systematic Theology. I'm going to pan back and forth on these for you. Uh, the entire Galian series, uh, that's a really excellent uh, material. And on the practical side, J. Vernon McGee's commentary series here as well. Uh, you're going to be noticing a number of different books, and uh, by all means, you might want to just go ahead and, as I say, begin purchasing books that are in the interest in the areas that you're beginning to study. I'm going to show you another shelf over here pretty soon that has a lot of special interest books. And these are the types of things that, again, uh, will greatly benefit you. Because a lot of, I've got letters from people and stuff where they say, hey, Rod, you know, you've got together and, you know, can you answer these questions for me? Well, you know what? All the, the difference between me, perhaps, and someone who might ask that question is that when I had $10 in my pocket, instead of going and spending it on something, uh, you, know, uh, you know, whatever the case might be, I went into a bookstore and said, hey, you know, let me have one of these. And I slowly built up. Again, I didn't start out with this collection. It, it's been gradually building over the years. So it's something that you got to take step by step. But when you begin to do it, you're going to find uh, a great resource at your fingertips. And you're going to find a great hunger for the Word because you're going to have a much clearer and much more in-depth understanding of all of the things that Scripture teaches. 
So I'm going to go ahead right now and pan it back and forth for you so you can see kind of the books that I have and uh, hopefully that will be of some benefit for, to you. Go going over some of the books that I have in my shelves. I'm just going to take you over several of them, several of the shelves that I think will be really helpful in the books that you can pick up. Uh, instead of going over each individual one, I think I'll just go ahead and continue to pan them. And I'm going to also play you some of the music, the type of music that I listen to and I study. Uh, this particular cut is off a Phil Keggy CD, uh, The Wind and the Wheat, which is an excellent one I'd suggest you pick up. Um, this type of music also is just uh, uh, sets the mood and study. Um, you know, it's real cool, so check it out. Thank you. 